In this video, we'll be talking about simplifying rational expressions. First, our definition. A rational expression is a polynomial divided by another polynomial. A rational expression is essentially a fraction whose numerator and denominator are polynomials. For example, we have 3x squared minus 9x plus 5 over 2x plus 7. So here the numerator of this fraction is a trinomial and the denominator of this fraction is a binomial. And we'll see that rational expressions behave just like fractions do. We'll be able to simplify them, add them, subtract them, multiply and divide them in the very same way. Now one difference between a polynomial and a rational expression is that in a polynomial the variable can represent any real number. But if you remember, division by zero is undefined. So in a rational expression, the variable can represent any real number that will not make the denominator zero. If the value of the variable does make the denominator zero, we say the expression is undefined for that value. All right, so here we have a rational expression, 3 plus 2x over x minus 5. And the question that we want to answer is, when is this rational expression undefined? And now the answer to that question would be when x equals 5. Now the reason for that is if you can imagine plugging in 5 for x into the denominator, we see that we get 5 minus 5, which is equal to 0, and we know we cannot have 0 as a denominator because we cannot divide by 0. So for this expression, it would be undefined for x equals 5, and it would be defined for all other values of x. Now this will become more important later on when we're solving rational equations. For now, we're going to just focus on simplifying rational expressions. And as I said before, rational expressions are just fractions. So we are going to simplify them in the very same way by canceling common factors. So in this very simple example here, if we have the expression AB over AC, we have a common factor of A, we can cancel out that common factor, and we're left with B over C. Now in general, when you want to simplify rational expressions, the two steps that you will follow are to first factor the numerator and denominator completely, and then you'll cancel any common factors that you have. So you can put these two steps on your worksheet. Okay, let's take a look at some examples. The instructions for these will just be simplify each expression. And we're going to take a look at these one by one. And you could take a moment and fill these in on your worksheet. Press pause, and then when you are ready, come back and we'll take a look at them together. Alright, let's take a look at number 1. We have the expression 3x minus 15 over 7x minus 35. And in the numerator, we're going to factor out a GCF of 3. And in the denominator, we'll factor out a GCF of 7. Now when we do that, we see that we have a common factor of x minus 5 in the numerator and denominator. And when we cancel those out, we're left with 3 over 7. So this expression is equivalent to the original rational expression. Now for the second example, we have a trinomial, which has a GCF of x. So we're going to factor that out first to get x squared minus 4x minus 5. And the denominator is also, also has a common factor of x, so we'll take that out. Now when we do this, we have not factored the numerator or denominator completely. So I still need to go ahead and factor the trinomial in the numerator. So I know that will give me two binomials. And I'm looking for two numbers that will multiply to negative 5 and add to negative 4. And those numbers are negative 5 and 1. In the denominator, the x squared minus 5 or excuse me, 25, can be factored as the difference of two squares. So x minus 5 times x plus 5, and now I could go ahead and cancel out those common factors of x and x minus 5 to give me x plus 1 over x plus 5. 
And again, this expression is equal to the original expression. Now for number 3, in the numerator, we're going to once again take out the GCF, this time of 3. And in the denominator, we have a GCF of 5. Now when I take out the GCF, I notice that the two binomials that are left over are almost the same, except the terms are switched. So they're not quite the same. I have an x minus 2 and a 2 minus x. Now when we cancel these out, we get not a factor of 1, but a factor of negative 1. And we'll talk about this in more detail in class, and we'll kind of prove why that is so. But right now, whenever you see this pattern, you can cancel them out, and that gives you a factor of negative 1. This leaves us with negative 3 over negative 5. Now, it's important to note that we have this very important shortcut, a minus b over b minus a, is always equal to negative 1. So you can take a moment and write this very important on your worksheet that you have accompanying this video. This way you know that anytime you see that pattern, you can go ahead and make that cancellation. All right, so we're going to go over to our last example. In the numerator here, I see that I have the difference of two squares. I'm very careful about the order. So I have 1 minus x times 1 plus x. And in this denominator, I have one of those tricky trinomials. So I'm going to use grouping here. So I'm multiplying 3 times negative 1. And that means I want to find two numbers that multiply to negative 3, but that also add to negative 2. So those two numbers are going to be negative 3 and positive 1. And I'll use those two numbers to split up my middle term. So my trinomial turns into a four-term polynomial, 3x squared minus 3x plus x minus 1. I'll group the first two and the second two terms, take the GCF out of that first group. Just rewriting my numerator here. The GCF in the first group is 3x, that leaves me with x minus 1. And there is no GCF in the second group, but I'm going to put a 1 outside those parentheses. So my common factor is x minus 1 in the denominator. And once again, I'm just rewriting my numerator. And the leftover in the denominator is 3x plus 1. Now once again, I see that very same pattern, that 1 minus x and x minus 1. I can cancel them out, but that leaves me a factor of negative 1 that I'll just put in the numerator. So overall, I have negative 1 times 1 plus x over 3x plus 1. And once again, this expression is equivalent to the one that we have before. What makes it simpler is that we've gotten rid of those common terms in the numerator and denominator. Now, we'll be looking at more examples in class together. However, remember that all you're doing here is factoring. So you're going to need to use all of your strategies for factoring that we learned in the last chapter and apply it for these expressions. The next sections will be talking about multiplying, dividing, adding, and subtracting. And of course, we'll always want to simplify our final answer just like we always do with fractions. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed your video on simplifying rational expressions. Any questions, you can address them in class.